Hey there, Postal here. So today we're taking out the Vampire F1 Tier 8 battle. That's nice. Morning Wood, nice. Uh, he's in a very strong plane now that they've upgraded the guns on it. Uh, well, I wouldn't say it's a strong plane, but it's certainly a better plane. It's an enjoyable plane. I like it, but it's not going to outduel me. What am me? Well, me is a Tier 8 British premium fighter. However, Unlike 99% um, of the premiums out there, this one you can get completely for free. This plane in the XP-55, which is Tier 6 American Fighter. Um, I highly recommend if you're new to the game, start going for the XP-55. You can get that just doing your dailies and doing your normal grind. The Vampire here, you can still do um, with your dailies and your grind. However, a lot of the missions require like ground attackers and bombers and stuff like that and fighters and heavy fighters and multi-rolls so like you need a little bit of everything and you need to actually be good or at least above average at everything and um well, maybe not even above average you need to be at least average with everything and so that's going to take time right nobody just hops in the game and suddenly created everything and i say nobody because i mean most people and so this plane can be earned for free, but don't expect to just hop in the game and get it. Even once you're good at the game and you've um, got all the different plane types that you need, it's still going to take months and months and months and months to earn the plane. Uh, but it is 100% worth it. This is one of the best tier 8 premiums in the game, and the fact that you can get it for free really speaks volumes about the difference between World of Warplanes and some of the other wargaming titles that are out there. Um, hell, uh, between World of Warplanes and some of just the other game titles that are out there. Let's go ahead and knock out some planes here. Thank you very much. Let's see what we can do here. Unfortunately, the one thing that the XP-72 is not very good at is going to be out maneuvering anything. Here we go. Let's see if we can't get that sector. I think we can. Um, this has four 20 millimeter cannons. They're centrally located, so unlike a lot of the other British fighters that have a weakness of having their 20 millimeter cannons off on the wings, so you miss half your freaking shots. Um, these are centrally located. Once you start hitting one, you're going to be hitting most, if not all, of your shots. Um, which is awesome. You've got a ton of speed. This is not a Spitfire. It is not a maneuverability type plane. Sure, you can build it for maneuverability, and I'm kind of tempted to do that. But I like the ability to speed around this, the from sector to sector do my thing and uh, be impactful and then get to the next sector. If your cannons are hitting well enough, you don't necessarily need to be the turniest thing out there. But it's pretty well balanced as far as its setup is concerned, or its abilities, I should say. Um, we'll take a look at the equipment setup that I've got and the flexibility that this plane will have once you earn it. Uh, we can talk about that as well. There we go. I think I'm just gonna sit here and defend the center for the rest of this game. Um, or at least for a while, because I've got really no reason to go anywhere else. The enemy team has not captured anything. Um, even the thing that they did capture, we were able to tear back. You can just see what these freaking cannons can do. Um, sorry. Sorry. I don't like picking on the humans. But, I mean, that, that's, that's what's in front of you. That's what you kill. Um, what do I need to do here? need to try to figure out what I need to do. Um, I want to go defend a command center a little bit, I think. Uh, but we can try to... Right, see, the problem is right now we're all by ourselves here in the center. Uh, I guess we've got a heavy fighter that's available to help. Um, but I never really trust the bots to do what needs to be done. Get this F2G using our jet speed here to catch up with very, very fast planes. 
Uh, but they don't have a jet, so there's only only so fast an F2G can go. There we go. Got ourselves an Akamatsu. I think I just put myself in front of a air defense aircraft, so probably not the smartest thing I've ever done. There we go. Back to ours. Let's head on over to that command center. I'm going to go push over to it, towards it. So I keep my uh, engine cooling for the situations where I want to get to another sector as quickly as possible. Sometimes I'll use it when I'm trying to get away from somebody, but more often than not, I'm using it to get to a sector to help defend it or um, to you know, help kill something that I want to try to catch up with. Like 262. Knocked out his wing and his tail. Not that that means too much when you're in this plane, because you're going to outmaneuver him no matter what anyway. Um, I kind of. So I'm going to ignore that command center because I really actually want them to capture it. So maybe this game will proceed. Um, but you can just see the kind of impact we're having. Obviously, we've got an A7M that's doing some heavy lifting as well, just, you know, doing A7M kind of things. My A7M is really good at camping a sector and owning it. Uh, this plane can... Oh, that guy's farther away than I thought he was. This plane can certainly defend sectors very, very well. But its its ability to get from sector to sector is really its biggest strength. You've got these huge cannons. Well, they're not huge. But they're huge cannons for you know, the situation that you need them to be. Um, consistent 20 millimeter cannons. You'll notice I do let off the um, trigger every once in a while, probably every second or second and a half, just to make sure that they don't overheat. Um, Spitfire, yeah, Spitfire 9 is going to wish he had centrally located cannons. Whereas all mine were able to hit there, his were off to the left and to the right. Uh, can't support me any longer. I don't need your support, sir. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and go for. Well, I guess I'm just gonna go for whatever the freaking closest plane is to me. Looks like there's a Hornet here and a the 262s over here also. Yeah. That, that trigger tap didn't work out so well that time. Up oh, and game's over. It looks like, can we, let's get our boost on. Oh, never mind. Game's over. Good try, though. Um, pretty darn good game, right? We got a Marseille there, so 17 kills in one sortie. Got the Akamatsu, which isn't uh, the most difficult thing to earn in this plane, to be honest. Um, let's head on back. <laughs> I got myself a postal medal. Uh, 19 kills, no more, no less. Oh, well, one more kill, and I could have gotten an ace there. Um, but you can see the the, uh, the impact that a Vampire F1 can have. Because you have strong cannons, you're able to tear up heavy fighters and even ground attackers, some bombers, pretty easily. Uh, you've got flexibility of a decent amount of airspeed, Decent maneuverability. Yeah, you're not the fastest and you're not the most maneuverable, but you've got a well-balanced approach to that In fact, one of the biggest weaknesses of this plane is its altitude performance not its speed or its maneuverability The reason I've kept uh, my equipment set up more towards the speed side is to help mitigate the uh, the negative impact of the altitude performance Obviously, it's really good impact here from our a7m our b32 was doing b32 kind of things they had an ME-265 that was doing a lot of work there. Unfortunately, it's just, you know, you're getting out, outworked by a B-32 and a vampire is really what it came down to. We had a really good team uh, chemistry, even though we weren't necessarily communicating with each other. We were all where we needed to be. Um, ME-265 is a great GA, but just can't outcap a B-32. Unfortunately, as good as an XP-72 is, it has to be to be effective. It has to avoid confrontation with things like vampires, and there's only so much you can do in that regard. 
I was able to, to counter him quite a bit and quite easily, to be honest. Um, nothing against that pilot, just the way the vampire is built. It's built to do that kind of thing. So I really like the vampire for a few different reasons. Um, obviously, I've already mentioned the fact that you can get this plane. Yes, you, whoever's watching this, can get it for free. Um, it would be available. I, I obviously don't have the ability to show it, but it would be available as, as free missions until you've actually earned it. There's a lot, a lot of missions, though. They're not all fighter missions, obviously. I remember one that I had to skip uh, when I was first playing the game, or, you know, first trying to get this plane, was the Lang. Uh, but you can skip those with your tokens. Keep earning tokens, and you can use those to skip the missions that you just can't seem to get past. I would recommend, though, don't just, don't just try to get this plane just to get this plane. Honestly, earn the plane by doing your dailies. Earn the plane by doing your normal grind. Earn the plane that way, so that way you're not spending all your tokens, you know, uh, getting frustrated trying to get this plane. Maybe even getting the plane and then being frustrated with the plane itself because you've you've just tried to get a plane rather than learn how to play the game. If you're playing the game, learning to play the game, and um, focusing on the missions but not like killing yourself to get the missions, you'll earn the plane. You'll get better at the game, and you'll actually enjoy this plane quite a bit once you get it. Um, so again, this plane is, you've got a goblin engine, ooh. Um, you have four 20 millimeter cannons, centrally located right down here on the bottom. And that just, that goes so far to the impact of this, this plane. It allows you to know, you know, that once you see your, your guns start hitting target, that you will, um, you know, easily be able to take down the, the enemy aircraft. You just need to keep in mind, though, um, this plane is not the turniest plane, so if you're going after a turn fighter, a Yak, an A7M, Hell, Spitfires, uh, Lavochkins even, uh, you need to be mindful that if you don't kill them, you're going to have to speed away from them. And so that's why I've actually built this plane more towards the speed than towards the maneuverability. I was very tempted to change this um, high-speed gas turbine out for a lightweight power unit. We'll, we'll take a quick, quick look at this whole setup right now. Um, you don't get forward firing weapon equipment, which is kind of a shame. It would be nice to be able to put something like reinforced bolt carriers, actually any of them, gas operated action or long gun barrels would all help the guns, obviously, um, and they'd all be effective on this particular plane. Uh, alas, none of them are available. So you have two airframe and two engine slots once you specialize the plane. I've gone with three built towards speed and one towards maneuverability. I was tempted to change out the high-speed gas turbine for um, lightweight wing, uh, lightweight power unit, excuse me. I just feel like, and I haven't tested it out, but just looking at the numbers, it seems like you'd lose a lot of speed. Yes, you'd gain a lot of maneuverability, but the plane's really not built around maneuverability. It's built, in my play style anyway, built about getting from sector to sector, getting where you need to be most effective, putting the guns to good use, and um, it, that, that's where I find the, the biggest impact of this plane. So I've kept the high-speed gas turbine on here. But what the great thing is about the, the having these four equipment slots on the plane is you can set up the plane however you want. You know, if you want to go all in on maneuverability, you can literally go ahead and put lightweight power unit on here, right? You can change out the uh, polished skin for something that doesn't negatively impact maneuverability. So reinforced skin, I guess, would be your, your thing. And so your maneuverability is going to jump up quite a bit. Obviously, your airspeed is going to jump up go down quite a bit. But you're going to have more of a maneuverability build there. Um, and if you feel more comfortable in that in a turn fighter, you can be more of a turn fighter. You're not going to be the turniest fighter. And again, that's why I recommend going with a speed build of some sort. I guess I could just click here and click reset. But there's definitely flexibility on the plane. If you want to go for a turn build, you can do that. Um, and then that just fits your play style. It's one thing I like about having four equipment slots on the airframe and engine is you can build it around how you like to play your plane um, type situation. My cockpit equipment now you might be looking at this and going, what the heck is Postal doing with the Advanced G-Suit instead of something like the Sight? Well, you may have noticed, uh, you know, my guns were hitting pretty darn well anyway, right? And I've noticed that too. So instead of using the Sight, 
I've tested out the advanced G suit. This uh, helps your maneuverability at high speeds. The bonuses on mine actually help the accuracy of moving targets. And just maneuverability in turns in general is positively impacted. So the G suit works when you're in the yellow or the red for the airspeed on, at high speeds. You actually get more maneuverability than you would normally at 9% in this situation. So the, the overall engine impact on this plane has a lot of a lot of the time I'm able to get into the yellow for the airspeed and maintain that yellow airspeed and so my maneuverability is actually positively impacted by that. So what that means is if I need to do some sort of turn maneuver I'm able to be tighter in my turns because I'm going faster. And So that just kind of reinforces the speed build that I've got here. It allows these two items to help with the maneuverability aspect of the plane uh, and just puts it in a very sweet spot for my playstyle. Again, this might not fit your playstyle. You might desperately need that uh, firing accuracy buff. Completely understood. I would not waste my time with the cockpit armor. In fact, it's the worst thing you can do with the equipment for the cockpit, don't use the cockpit armor. Navigational radio equipment can be useful in certain situations. Um, a plane like this, I, I would rather have it an even faster plane to make uh, the NRE uh, more impactful. If you're moving super quick, um, less visibility of your super quick plane um, will, will have you be able to, you'll be on top of people before they even realize you're there, basically. Uh, all, uh, this plane is relatively fast, but it's not a, a burner or anything like that. So I've gone with the G Soup. And again, you see the games I've, I've, well, the game I had, but I consistently have games like this in the Vampire. And I think it's because I've built the plane around my skill set. And so you might want to be building your plane around your skill set, um, which would have different equipment on your setup. As far as consumables are concerned, uh, first aid dressing is going to be the recommendation all the time to anybody in this particular plane. It just doesn't catch on fire all that often. And even more importantly, you want to make sure that you've got your accuracy with your cannons, no matter if you've got equipment helping the accuracy or not, you, you want your pilot to be available. Pneumatic control assist, I highly recommend this simply because if you do get stuck in a turn fight, you're not able, you know, your engine does get knocked out and you're not able to get the engine back in. Using pneumatic control assist can help you, you know, hang on for a couple seconds or, or maybe even out turn the plane that's out turning you. Uh, more often than not, though, I actually use this to get, just get my guns on target quicker, not necessarily to out dogfight somebody but just to kill somebody so I can focus on the next person. I think in this particular battle, I actually used it against the XP-72 just to get my guns on target quicker, so that way I could disengage killing him and go attack the ME-265 or whatever else I was looking at. I've gone all in on my speed for the engine. I do not recommend this for, for most everybody that's out there. Engine cooling is definitely important. I do recommend that. However, you may not want to use improved mixture control. You may want to use, or probably do want to use, the uh, manual engine restart simply because if your engine gets knocked out you are in a lot of trouble in this plane um, i don't tend to get my engine knocked out i tend to to be paying attention to the planes that are coming around me every once in a while i will get my engine knocked out just because it happens i'm willing to take that chance i'm willing to deal with the repercussions of my choices that being said not everybody is and not everybody has that that skill set so having a manual engine restart is probably going to be the best option for the majority of pilots out there again i try to push my planes to the extreme and there's definitely been games where i wish i had manual engine restart on here just because the enemy pilot i was going against just kept knocking out my engine every freaking second um but in general i don't lose my engine all that often in this plane i've got universal ammo on here just because why the heck not um, I don't need to use gold ammo. I don't see the purpose of it. The, the cannons tend to do as good as they can do anyway. But um, using using gold ammo on this, like a, any other plane, it is going to have a, an extra benefit if you've got that kind of gold lying around. Um, so that's my overall setup on the plane. I've got, you know, this is a premium plane, so obviously I can put any pilot in here. I've put my swift pilot in here. Obviously, keep in mind that's helping the accuracy of the guns. But I also figure it is a premium plane. I'm not going to be putting in, um, you know, my my crappiest pilots. I'll typically put my crappiest pilots in something like a boomerang or a venom that, uh, you know, I know that I've got flexibility of being better than, you know, better than a lot of the, uh, the bots at that level. 
And then once I get those pilots built up a little bit, then I'll put them in the vampire um, kind of situation. And so having my swift pilot in here who's built for yeah, built for a plane that's very similar to this anyway, it just, you know, he slides right in and feels very comfortable. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Do you happen to have a vampire? Do you agree with me? Is it a great tier eight uh, premium plane or am I just talking on my ass? Um, I haven't heard a lot of people complain at all about this plane, so I'd be surprised if somebody didn't like it. Then again, everybody's different, um, and so maybe I shouldn't be too surprised. I would love to hear your setup on the plane. Do you happen to have the same setup as me, or is, uh, again, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised at all if the majority of people have a, have a slightly different setup, at least. Do you focus on speed? Do you focus on maneuverability? Do you focus on gun accuracy? How do you have your Vampire F1 set up? I'd love to hear it in the comments down below, or feel free to hop in my Discord. Uh, we can continue the conversation there. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a great and uh, happy new year, and I'll catch you on the battlefield.